What's up guys? This is Bulba the Fell Handed. I have had a garage request by more than a few people for some strange reason. So let's get right to it. This is the Blitzen free tank they were giving around Christmas. It has Christmas lights on it. I thought that was a bit odd, but you know what? I'm not going to question it. M22 Locust. This is a tank that I got back, you know, because I had it and I don't know. You know, it's a premium tank. I had it and I put in a ticket for it to go ahead and get it back. I heard this was a good tank. Haven't really ran it that much. M24 Chaffee. A little different than the version you're going to see a couple of years ago. Just physically, mind you, I think as far as statistics wise, the gun is about the same. Moving on, next up on the chopping block here is the T71. Another tank that has had a total visual makeover. A lot of the older vets will remember T71 looking like something totally different. And that's fine, you know, that's the T71 I was more or less raised on, quote unquote, in the World of Tanks game on console. Next up we have the M4 Sherman. I'm not really 100% why I kept this tank. I know some people are amazing at it. I, however, am not that one. I, d I did subpar on this tank at best, and I'm just, I'm not, you know, 100% there as far as the gun and the armor. It's really, it seems to me, a mediocre tank. Now, the E2 is a different story. This thing is a wall of pain. The gun, eh, it's the same as the E8, but the armor, man, the armor will put you in submission. You will bounce rounds all day and all night if the thing is I mean, even if it's straight towards you, 90 degrees shot, if it's angled, it's even worse. Now, your fury, a lot of people don't know, is based off an easy 8. And on this tank, I run a rammer, a stabilizer, and vents. This is more or less the best loadout, pretty much verbatim exactly what VB Addict says to run. If you do not know that website, I highly suggest you check it out. Now, for crew skills, I only have six cents which I feel is the first skill you should get as a tank driver next up is the T29 this tank is nothing short of amazing if you get it hauled down you will be there all day long I've had a lot of subscribers say hey bull I have problems getting this thing hauled down and, and you know the thing is is just know the maps really and know where to put this beast hauled down that is the only thing I can tell you. We've got a rammer, stabilizer, and vents more or less verbatim straight from VB Attic. Highly recommend you run that loadout as well. Now, moving on, you know, we've got the crew skills here. Six cents is a must for anyone. And, you know, repair and track mechanic won't hurt either. Now, moving up to the T-57 Heavy, a.k.a. the Space Tank. I nicknamed this thing the Space Tank years ago when it first came out because it, it literally looks like a spaceship mounted with the M-103 style hull. <laughs> and the results are the following. This tank is extremely deadly if left to its own devices. You know... This is the type of tank that's in a firing line that just pulls out after you fired, empties its four rounds into you, and backs up and reloads. And the reload is is typically extremely short. There are, of course, things you can do to shorten it. <laughs> Moving on. The Hellcat, one of my personal favorites. The only downside is the expectation for this tank is rather high because it is by nature of course a tank destroyer i know a lot of guys use it as a medium tank because it is so fast some even a scout tank scouting out targets don't really understand that last bit moving on m41 an awesome tier 5 arty love this tank actually bought it back 
just to run it every now and again, you know. And the good thing about the American line, Artie, is you don't have a lot of packages to go through. Normally you have one or two, and bam, that's it. And this is one of those cases where you just have one package. And, you know, moving on, we have the Tier 7. This thing has a massive cannon. We have it fully upgraded. The only downside is the traverse is kind of limited on this tank. Not really a full traverse. We're kind of looking for the big traverse that we see on the 5355. Or even the Conqueror gun carry, and this not so much. Now the Matilda we bought, because a lot of the other fellas we run with have the Matilda. And unfortunately, I was two tiers down in the game that I bought this thing. So I really had to work for it. But from what I'm told, if you're in an equal tier match, you just kind of stride forward firing. And nobody can do anything about your armor, even if they hit you from the rear. Which is really, really weird. Now, the Cromwell is an amazing, amazing tank. If you don't have the Cromie, I highly recommend you get this. We even have, uh, you know, a clan out there named Cromwell, or Cromie, I think. I mean, the tank is so good, there's a clan named after it. Amazing tank. It's probably close to the Holy Trinity as you will ever get. You know, good gun, good armor, good mobility. Mobility, excuse me, more or less average, I guess, would be, you know, the right thing. As far as skills go, you know, you have to have six cents. You know, BIA, camo, things like that. And, you know, as far as equipment goes, this is more or less straight from VB Attic, which is where I use a lot of my, or, or excuse me, I get a lot of my equipment ideas. Uh, now, the Firefly, I, I came into this situation and I said, you know what? I want the biggest and best Sherman, and then boom, somebody said, Firefly, it's got a huge gun, get it. So I got it, and you know, I'm impressed with it. I don't really run it as much as I used to, but nevertheless, it is a good tank. More or less exactly the same as the Boilermaker. Because, you know, I started going down the M4 line, and then I got the Firefly, and then I got you know, the Fury, and then, and, and, you know, more or less the whole collection. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, if you were a, a standardized M4 lover, so to speak. I mean, man, the gun on this thing is nothing short of amazing. The only thing I would change is maybe, you know, the fire rate. I would up the fire rate some, because sometimes you get in those situations where you need it. Now, the Burt. <laughs> the Burt really got it in the last update. Excuse me, maybe even the update before last made this tank massive. This thing used to look like a matchbox car. Now it more or less looks like a real tank, despite what people say. This thing is amazing. Now, of course, the Conqueror gun carrier is the, the end of that line, and it is nothing short of a beast. This thing pumps out damage. If you connect with somebody, you are ruining their game. Even if they don't die, their game is more or less going to be <laughs> over. Now, granted, the aim time and the accuracy and all that's not great at all. But, man, if you hit somebody, you are going to send them for a loop. You have to, more or less, guys, have a rammer, a GLD, and vents on this thing. I mean, that's pretty much scripture. Forget about your camo net. This is a tank that I got for free that I don't run a whole, whole lot. You're going to see a lot of tanks in here that are German. And the reason is, guys, is at one point I owned every single German tank in the game, premium or nah. And I've kind of moved away from that. I've kind of been selling some of the low-tier German stuff, non-premium to get garage spaces just because you know every German tank is cool and everything but not every German tank is awesome and you know as someone who is on their way up I highly recommend purchasing the tank 
that is the most OP for the tier. Now this is <laughs> this is a Panzer 1C. This tank is amazing, and the only reason I have a halfway decent crew in it is because we have a particular contest in Bulls Brigade right now with this tank. So <laughs> as you can see, I've got a halfway decent crew in it. And you know, granted, it's it's not totally amazing crew. But you know we've got six cents repair. We have a few skills, and, and you know it, it's kind of like you know you you don't want to put a big time crew in it, but you know you want to put enough in there to try to win the contest. So T15, amazing tank, not quite as amazing as the one C, but I don't know. It just depends more or less on your play style. The 1C is, is a really good tank if someone happens to be more or less looking the other way. Now, this particular tank is one you get if you renew your Xbox Live subscription through World of Tanks uh, somehow. I, I don't know. I know I, I did it enough to where I had to get this and I went ahead and got the 2J. 2J has amazing armor, by the way. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say I have the wrong gun on this tank. Even some of my own people, Giz, I'm looking at you. And <laughs> the thing is, I've heard two different things. I've heard run the autoloader, and then I've heard run the single shot. The single shot can, you know, not necessarily keep up with the autoloader, but it does more damage. It's more constant. You don't necessarily have to reload. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the Leo, I haven't really ran the Leo a whole lot. The Leo that I'm in love with is the Leo 1. Amazing tank, by the way. Haven't really ran that much of that one. 2801, I haven't really ran a whole, whole lot of it either. You're going to see very little experience on this tank as well. So, not a whole lot going on here. Now, of course, I have top package on this gun. Or excuse me this tank so you know you're gonna see a lot of the same basic stuff that everybody else runs no extra bits I'm not necessarily a light tank guy I can run them I just uh, you know I prefer the mediums because the light tanks are, are set up differently as far as your statistics and everything go um, spa pans are one C very good tank. I've seen a lot of people do extremely well in this tank. It's not my cup of tea, you know, going back to the mediums. I, you know, you think I would be good at this tank since I consider myself extremely good in the bat chat. <laughs> so you would think that since that is extremely close to being a, a light tank that's actually a medium, you think I would do very well, but however, I, I don't know. I prefer a lot more damage in a medium tank. It's not really until tier 8 that I can pull said medium damage off. This tank, the Rue, is quite amazing. 85 kilometers top speed. If you get this thing going top speed, very little can connect with you. If they do connect with you, they're probably aiming a screen ahead of you, literally. Not kidding here. Now, you know, we have more or less the standard skills. You know, six cents, preventative maintenance. Um, we also have recon situational awareness. Recon adds 2% to your view range. Situational awareness adds 3% to your view range. So it's all about the view range with these light tanks. Notice we have a rammer and, you know, we have the coated optics as well. And guys, more or less, this comes straight from VB Attic. This is actually a French tank that was captured in World War II. The best tank in the world at this particular time. The Summa, if I am pronouncing that right. The Germans captured it and made it their own. I was even going to purchase the French tank of this version at some point. Looks like I haven't gotten around to it. Now, we are moving on to the Panzer IV. This tank, the side skirts on this tank, are a mere 5 millimeters. Now, I know you're asking yourself, why on earth would they add 5 millimeters of protection to the side skirts? 
I don't actually know. It seems a little bit counterproductive. They could probably use that steel in more time towards something extremely more effective. Now, we are at the Panzer 3-4. This is a very good tank. Handles very good. Has your standard 5, excuse me, your tier 5 gun, 110 penetration, 110 damage. You're going to notice a lot of German tanks have the 75 millimeter or 7.5 centimeter gun. And, you know, that's more or less standard for anything around that area. Minus, of course, your heavier hitting, you know, German heavy tanks. Now, moving on, this is a very good tank. A lot of guys have this tank, the T25. This is more or less known as the opposite to the Ram Panzer, the Panzer 5-4. Speaking of which, the Panzer 5-4, they have made one of that tank and essentially they just put a, a Panzer 5 hull, which was a Panther, and then they added the Panzer 4 turret to the top of it. That's why it looks a bit odd and of course has no depression. This wasn't actually a tank. This was just more or less a mock-up to say, hey, it can be done. <laughs> the only actual photograph I've ever seen of this tank was on a train, probably to show Hitler to say, hey, look, we did the thing. Moving on, we are at the VK-3001D, and it's not a bad tank. Notice we have everything fully upgraded, and, you know, the sloped armor is very reminiscent of the T-34. The gun is not bad. Uh, you know, it could be considerably worse, and the long barrel aids in velocity. The VK-3002M. Love this tank because it looks exactly, exactly like your traditional Panther, minus, of course, the side skirt. Love this tank. Don't make as many videos in it as I probably should, considering how much I love it. Really enjoy this tank. I mean, when I think traditional Panther, that's what I think. VK-3001P, this is one of the Porsche design forward turret Tiger tanks. He did not win the contract because when his rival Henschel went up against him, um, his tank, the Porsche tank, which was made by Dr. Porsche, the actual person who made the cars and everything, it actually caught fire, had hydroelectric transmission, and it caught fire. Don't really necessarily know why, but burning tanks aren't a good side, excuse me, sign of winning a contract, and he went with Henschel, which was, in my opinion, a better move. VK3002 D. And this is another more or less T-34 look-alike with the sloped armor in the front. The Russians, the Soviets, what the Germans considered a lesser species, invented sloped armor. And sloped armor increases the thickness. And then, of course, if you take that further on to the IS-7, you have compound angles, which increases the thickness a lot. Moving on, the Panther tank. This is your traditional Panther tank. Of course, you know, if you see it in the newsreels, you're not going to see the round gun and the round gun mantlet. You're going to see the one like on the 3002M. The game, the Wargaming has it like that. Not really going to go into details. Now, this is one tank that the Germans attempted to camouflage as a Wolverine, I think it is. Eh, I'm not buying it, but that's fine. Now, we already had this tank before the Champion tank came out. Now, keep in mind, my constant viewers, this tank is not amazing. It's okay. That's all I'll give it, and that's fine. It can be okay. It doesn't necessarily have to be amazing at everything. You're going to block some things on the turret due to the strength of the turret as well as the mantlet. The hull, you know, possibly just not so much. 
it's a good overall tank. Now, your Panther II, which did not technically exist, sports the same turret, you know, without the the rounded Panther mantlet, and, and the same body, more or less. The only thing you're getting is possibly an upgraded engine, as well as an upgraded gun. Now, the Indian Panzer is one of the tanks I bought to complete my collection that, as you can see, obviously I have never ran. <laughs> and that's fine. It will probably be sold off at one point to make room for another tank that matters to me at that particular time. But you know what? So is the Garage of Bull by the Fellhanded. The Leopard Prototype extremely good tank I even practiced with this with our WCL tournament and it went very very well for me not so good for the the tournament goers this tank is but a speck compared to what the leopard one is in other words the leopard one is amazing compared to this tank the leopard one is what I consider the best tank in the game FYI E50 this essentially trades mobility for armor. I know a lot of you will hear me mention the the Holy Trinity, which is armor, mobility, and gun firepower. And this essentially trades the mobility for armor. Not necessarily a fan of this because you can't ever count on armor. Now, the gun on the E50M is very very close to the one that's on the leopard the leopard has a slightly better aim time but more or less the same accuracy penetration and damage now you know you kind of have to ask yourself if you want armor or mobility granted i think the leo of course has slightly better sight range coming in at 410 meters versus the e50m or 50 murder now granted of course obviously you wouldn't want to be rammed by the E50M because it is quite a heavy tank it's essentially a medium version of the E75 love absolutely love the Leopard 1 <laughs> love this tank aim time accuracy damage penetration and they even buff the rounds per minute in not this last patch but the patch before so it fires faster so you're gonna have a faster firing gun and the reason they did that is because you know to give it kind of an edge over the E50 because that tank really didn't shine when it came to gun handling they kind of had to give it a, a tiny tiny buff eh, you know the thing doesn't have any armor it's not gonna block any rounds so they had to kind of Push it somewhere, in other words. Okay, moving on. So, we have the captured KV-1. This thing is bar none a lead hose. If you want a fun, fun, fun tier 5, buy this tank. Now, granted, of course, keep in mind, it is not fleet of foot. This tank is not fast. You're going to really have to, have to struggle to get this thing into position. There will be no... Uh, disappearing and then appearing on random flanks very very quickly it's not going to happen this is a push the main areas of contention tank and spray everything down with rounds that's exactly what this tanks entire job is now as far as skills you know we have a, a few skills we've got six skills and we also have equipment on this we've got a rammer a GLD and vents physically the only thing we could do to make the thing fire faster is add food now this is a good tank and the reason I say that is it more or less has the same gun and same armor as the Tiger but at a tier lower so just keep that in mind you know you're gonna have a hundred more or less on the front of the hull and the front of the turret and that's what the Tiger has and you know it's more or less exactly the same gun the tiger of course being the tiger has more HP and you know that's the thing you know you can kind of angle it a little bit better 
because of the irregularities in the 3601's hull. You will see those when you see the escape hatch on the side. Moving on, here we are, and you know, this is right around the area of the Porsche failure. I don't necessarily want to say failure because things happen, but yes, the tank caught on fire in a trial, so yeah, okay, it's a failure. So, moving on, yes, this is the failure for turret, um, an excellent opportunity to reverse side scrape. Reversing side scrape is where you turn around 180 degrees and you back you, the rear of your hull up to an area and side scrape like that. Thus, nobody can hit the rear of your tank. They can only hit the side and the side is angled because your turret is now in the back instead of in the front. More on that at another date. If I get enough requests for a reverse side scraping video, I shall make one. Tiger 131 is an amazing tank. So is the Hammer, actually. Haven't really ran the Hammer a whole lot. I know I hear a lot of people scream it's underpowered, but that's fine. It's not too, too big of a deal. Tiger 131, however, does have a slightly slow turret compared to other Tiger tanks. Now, little known fact, they did buff the gun on the short 88 compared to the the beginning gun on most Tiger tanks, which is the short 88. So, you know, normally you have a, a penetration of, say, 132. The Tiger one has 169. So you can do a lot of work with AP rounds versus APCR. So don't spend that money unless you have to. Once again, the equipment is straight from VB Attic. Not necessarily for the Tiger 131 as it is not released on PC, but the Tiger tank in general. Now, VK4502. Awesome tank. I enjoyed this tank. I like this tank. I don't have any problems running it. It's more or less the same. It's essentially a Porsche version of the Tiger 2. Now, I haven't ran the low a whole, whole, whole lot, as you can see by the experience I have accrued. <laughs> it's one of those tanks that I bought to complete my collection of nothing but German tanks. And that, you know, that's fine. If that's your goal, sure, have at it. Here we are at the Tiger II. Tiger II has an extremely formidable gun that is surprisingly accurate, coming in at .31 which, you know, doesn't really make a lot of sense because it's it's a heavy tank, it should be pushing, but the .31 is really going to make people try to snipe from this thing. And guys, let me tell you something, two updates ago, it really wasn't like that, and that's fine, <laughs> it's not my game, they can make any updates they want to. E75 used to be by far my favorite tank when I used to run mediums, have it quite a bit of XP on it, and a very deadly gun. And my constant viewers, you're going to find with a lot of these heavy tanks, they don't have fantastic accuracy. And the reason is this is to keep you from sniping, they want you up close and personal. 4502B or Bravo as a lot of people are going to call it very very nasty tank side scraping as a matter of fact I may do a weak spot guide on this tank to show you how to penetrate it from the front a lot of people have problems with it E100 Greta ran oh man at least 4,000 games in this tank when I first started used to run nothing but heavy tanks because you know, I thought heavy tanks had heavy armor and they would be impossible to pin. <laughs> I did not know the mechanics of the game. Now, that being said, I do. I run nothing but mediums. Medium tanks are the way to go. So we have a rammer, a stabilizer, and binos, which deviates from what most people think say you need to run. Now, my constant viewers, I've never enjoyed the Moss. This is no secret. 
when I am forced to play the moss under duress, I complain the entire time. I am not a heavy tank driver. You know, even though this tank really lets you side scrape very, very easy, I still don't enjoy it. I mean, at all. It, it just seems like you're just a giant punching bag for the entire team. And I, I don't think I've ever had a game where I wasn't the punching bag. I would much rather you know be in a medium tank disappear off the radar break contact and then be seen behind you next moving on Hetzer haven't really played a whole whole lot of this tank either it is an amazing tank I have heard numerous good things about this tank granted of course I would not necessarily use the howitzer I would switch to the other gun which is most likely 7.5 which is more or less standard for any German tank around that area. The Stug is the same way, not necessarily having the amount of patience I probably should for those tanks. I prefer mediums now. And you know, the Stug is fine as long as you are concealed. If you are spotted, if you don't have anyone to spot your targets, you are most likely in trouble. Moving on, Panzer 4C, this bad boy is just straight nasty. If it sets far enough away from getting detected and can connect with you, this thing will do big, big, major damage. Gun on this thing is awesome, and that's about where I'm going to leave it at. It's just an awesome gun. Not quite where the Nash Horn is, but it's getting there. Okay, we have another Stug. This is the Stug 3. And, you know, we're going to see, uh, you know, not too big of an improvement in the gun. It's just uh, they're fast firing. Let's go ahead and say that. It's going to be a fast firing. Jagdpanzer 4. This is the baby to the full on Jagdpanzer, which you find in the tier 10 lobbies. Now we're getting into a little bit of penetration, a little bit of damage. And, you know, we're talking about doing a little bit of work. Here is the Nash Horn. This is a, a tier 6 tank that has more or less a tier 9, 10 gun. I mean, you know, the E75 is more or less running the same thing. You know, give or take, of course. Dicker Max. I, you know, I ran this tank a little bit. It's a premium tank. I hear a lot of good things about it. This is one of those things that just kind of set back and then boom, hits you for 300 a shot. And, you know, it's a fun tank. You don't really have to have a lot of quick reflexes to run that bad boy. The Yag Panther. You know, this is a, a tank that the frontal armor kind of helps you out. Um, it can be penetrated. And this is, just think of this tank like an American tank where you cannot absolutely overangle. If you overangle, you're going to get penetrated in your side, and that's more or less going to be your game. The Stewart email. Now, when I think of large, large guns, I think of this tank. This tank is just nothing short of just 100% nasty. Now, excuse me, this is the, the gun that is extremely close to the E75, of course, minus 15 points or so of penetration. E75, as we all know, runs 246 millimeters of penetration and 490 damage with its 12.8 millimeter, excuse me, centimeter gun. E25, amazing, amazing tank. Cannot say enough about this tank. This is a tank that gives you death from a thousand cuts. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but just absolutely sprays the rounds. And, you know, you want to go traditional tank destroyer in this, set back, and snipe. Same as this one, actually. This is the Rombi, also known as the Roomba. That's what everyone calls it. Full 360 degree turret. Excellent camouflage. You just kind of sit there and pop shots. And that's 
fine. As long as, of course, you're not the one receiving them, then you will be just a wee bit salty. Now, <laughs> the Yag Kitty. The Yag Kitty is, is just 100% mean. This thing fires so fast, is so accurate, and, you know, the damage is okay. Look at that accuracy. That is incredible. Look at that aim time. And, and this has been buffed from its original state years ago when this tank first came out. Now, the J Panther II, very, very tough tank, very, very angled armor. It, it's very tough to get this thing frontally if it's leaning back. You know, a lot of times you're going to see these guys leaning back in order to take the most out of their depression. And the idea here is when you bottom out the gun with your depression, you are essentially making the front of the armor that much tougher. And you're going to see a lot of guys do that. Now, the Ferdinand, I don't have a whole lot of experience running. However, I do have a lot of experience fighting it. Not very, very tough to defeat because it is so slow. Can't really get around. Yag Tiger was a little known fact was the largest mass produced tank of World War II. That is a fact. Because, you know, your Tiger II wasn't as big as this bad boy. So yeah, largest produced Tiger, excuse me, Tiger tank of World War II. Moving on. Waffentrager Tier 9. Um, this thing, you know, the gun when they change the tree, you're going straight into the grill. Um, so, you know, it would behoove you to run the 15 centimeter on this bad boy. It's a little bit accurate. Um, Jagdpanzer has a 17 centimeter gun. Very, very strong. 1050 damage. I mean, amazing pin. Even more amazing penetration if you run a heat round. I mean, it, it's, I mean, I mean, it's a tier 10 tank destroyer it's gonna have ridiculous penetration. Um, this is more or less standard. You're gonna run your Caminet, Bonos, and a Rammer. And you know the Rammer's gonna increase DPM. The other two are, are defensive in nature. Um, your Tier 10 Waffle, what I call the hearse, I think it's caught on the past few years. You wanna go with the first gun in this, the 12.8 centimeter. 276 millimeters penetration on average, 560 damage on average per shot. Six shots in a clip, very, very nasty. If you are coming around a blind corner and this thing catches you, it will burn you down. Uh, I have a GLD on it, even though the aim time on this tank is ridiculous. I have Bonos. At the time, this tank was 420 mil, excuse me, 420 meters spotting distance which made it even more ridiculous so keep that in mind stern panzer 2 uh already i'm not a fan of clickers i just kind of went up this tree to complete my german tank clicker army so you're gonna have a lot of tanks i haven't necessarily ran this was one they added um, after the tree came out sometime, maybe three updates ago, haven't really ever ran this. Uh, you know, some of these tanks, I just have never ran them. I know you're thinking that's kind of ridiculous, and you're right, it is. I should probably get rid of them at some point and put something in there I'm actually going to run. And, and we may get to that point eventually. However, I do end up selling some low tiers to make room for some other things I'm getting in. And, you know, that's okay. So, you know, this is the Hummel. Hummel is a very, very popular German artillery. And, you know, it, the accuracy is what it is. But I, I personally think that RNG kind of takes it easy on the Hummel. Because I see a lot of these things being more or less tack drivers. Moving on, GW Panther, the reason I like this artillery is because it has a wide arc before you have to move the hull and mess up your aiming shot, your aimed shot. So just keep that in mind. 
the GW Tiger P, the P meaning it is on a Porsche hull. Eh, it doesn't have much of an arc at all you, before you have to move your entire hull. So just keep that in mind that you may have to mess up your your aiming reticle because we all know when you move your hull, it really does a number in your aiming reticle. GW Tiger. This is pretty much the top line of the gun here. I mean, you're talking about a massive, massive gun that does huge amounts of damage if, of course, it connects. I mean, you know, you're talking about damage enough to really ruin somebody's game. And finally, the GWE-100, also known as the Get Wet. This tank, if it properly connects with you, your game is more or less over. You are probably going to be at a few hundred points of health, more or less a one shot for everything. Now, my constant viewers, please keep in mind that whatever it says for high X is very different depending on what part of the armor it connects with. So there's a very good chance that it could hit you and give you full damage if it hits a lightly armored place in your tank. The AMX Chaffee. I enjoy this tank. I don't necessarily enjoy the fact it goes up to tier 10. I am not a light tank guru, so I run this tank very, very cautiously when I am in a tier 10 lobby in a tier 6 tank. It almost, it sounds too comical to say, actually. So we run coated opti optics, a stabilizer, and vents. And that's more or less standard for your light tank. Next up is the 1390. And this is a tank that, you know, once the light tanks get up so far, they become extremely deadly because they are so fast they can come in and clip someone out and they can absolutely leave no problem so you know time will tell when the the you know tier 10 tanks the tier 10 light tanks come out that are on the pc side assuming of course they come out so we have the same thing here we have a gld optics and vents and that's, you know, exactly what all your light tanks are more or less going to be running. So prepare yourself for that. This is the AMX CDC. This was a tank, I believe, last summer they were doing a some type of contest for. A good tank, excellent acceleration. And the downside is it doesn't necessarily have any armor. The camouflage is okay. The gun is okay. The armor, eh, it's not necessarily there. I wouldn't plan on blocking any shots. You just have to be extremely careful. This tank also understand it's going to see tier 10s. This is the AMX-30. It's a good, good tank. With the upgrade I particularly have, it's not very bad as far as the gun goes anymore. If you get the lower end, the lower side of the upgrades, yeah, it's not going to be absolutely great, but with this gun, you can actually do some things. Now, here we are to the Batchat 25T. Had a lot of requests for me to start running the Batchat again. Just literally, I had three games the other night, and every game a fan messaged me asking me to run the Batchat. So, yeah, I guess I don't really have much of a choice in running the tank. Now, you do want to run the 105. A little history lesson here. When the Batchat came out, all it was saddled with was the 90mm. Now, I do have quite a large crew on this tank. You know, you've got six cents, clutch braking, camouflage, which, of course, camouflage does its own thing. Uh, situational awareness repairs situational awareness as I might add adds plus two to your view range recon adds plus three brothers in arms adds plus five across the board uh, off-road driving is a good thing and then you know you have numerous numerous other skills that add a little bit in their own right I would actually recommend 
that you look each of these up to see exactly what they do because some of these you can find on what info and some of these you're gonna have to look at other websites to see more or less exactly what they do because every skill is important in its own way and you know even preventive maintenance you know helps me not to catch on fire which is always a good thing considering how I you know drive tanks so here we have a vertical stabilizer optics and vents in any tank that's an autoloader this is more or less what you would like to run because you can't run a rammer because autoloaders don't take rammers moving on we have the bat chat 155 58 very very good already I'm no clicker so I don't really run it a whole 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 lot and that's fine you know the damage it does it doesn't have a lot of splash damage it doesn't do a lot of damage normally you know for equipment we're gonna run the GLD the binos and the camo net which is more or less standard arty stuff if we weren't running the binos we would be running a rammer which is what you need for an arty now I don't know how the MS1 got in here I'm not running any equipment on it and I don't even think I've put any really supplies on it I'm not really sure how it got in here but that's fine this was an award tank and you know I decided to keep it I know a lot of guys sell their reward tanks for garage space I decided to keep this bad boy and it's a pretty fun tank it's more or less like a mini KB2 you can really derp the mess out of somebody when you get them in a good location if you hit them on the side of the rear you can pretty much in their game form LTTB is an amazing light tank highly recommend the top package this thing is just a straight nightmare if you know what you're doing not necessarily saying what I'm know what I'm doing in a light tank <laughs> but it is very very nasty I have some good games in the LTTP as far as skills go right now you know we have the six cents PIA recon situational awareness repair and track mechanic I'm a big fan of repair with track mechanic I mean you get the tracks fixed so quickly that I don't even literally have time to hold it, the button and select the tracks uh, t54 lightweight this is another really great light tank very very nasty uh, if used in the right hands and these tanks work best when you know your your mediums and your heavies your tank destroyers are more or less uh, unattended let me say they're out there by themselves and then the light tanks comes in t3485 rudy haven't ran this tank a whole whole lot i bought it because the dog barks when the sixth sense goes off that's the only reason i bought this tank haven't hardly ran it any more or less what i can take from this is it's pretty much the same as the t3485 stock tank so all we have here is six cents we're working on repairs as you can see we've ran about two or three games and that's it now t3488 love this tank this thing hits like a mac truck doing 220 damage granted of course the penetration isn't 169 like the tiger 131 because this is going off your standard 88 gun they buffed the tiger 131 at the last minute because they didn't think anyone would purchase a tiger 131 with your basic penetration of 132 so they buffed it and sure enough they sold a mess of them because i see them a lot and you know i bought one myself it's a great tank F dpm is just incredible now as far as skills go in the T3488 we have an incredible amount of skills on this tank just 
I mean, so many skills, we are having trouble keeping up with exactly what we have. You know, green thumb, silent driving, situational awareness, recon, just skills left, right, and center. And that's the best way to do it. My constant viewers is if you have a, you know, a few different crews that are really good, just bump them up to where they are the you know the legendary status and just have every single skill you want and honestly once you get above 15 skills you don't really need anything else I mean you know more or less you're just kind of adding in there and that you know that's fun so here we have a rammer we have a GLD and Vince this is more or less verbatim out of VB Attic check that website out the motherland was another tank another another winning tank you could get if you won <laughs> i guess I, i'm saying last year it was a a contest tank I, i'm not sure exactly how you won it if you did something i think it was xp based you won the tank t54 recently got this tank back Little known fact, the T-5455 is the most produced tank in the world today. That is a fact. T-5455, most produced tank in the world. Look it up. It is a fact. This tank is all over the place. Object 140. This is supposedly the best medium in the game from what I have been told. I kind of favor the bat chat. A lot of people like the Object 140. I've kind of sent my energy towards the BC. I am not necessarily too much a fan of this. Um, I've seen a lot of people do a lot of work in it. You know, it's not necessarily my cup of tea. But at the same time, it's easier to learn than the BC. The BC doesn't necessarily have a whole lot of room for error. If you go to the wrong location, you know, there's no armor, there's no DPM to protect you. If you go to a certain location and you somehow get empty, it is over for you. T62A. You know, there's a slight few differences between this and the 140. I know a lot of people will argue all day and all night on the exact differences between these two tanks. I'm not going to. The T62A turret is extremely strong versus the 140 eh, not so much I'm gonna leave the rest of the differences up to the you know the rest of the people who would much rather go into that than myself now kv2 <laughs> man you've got to get a kv2 that's all I'm gonna say if you don't have one you need to get one it is essentially the tier 6 death star if you hit someone in the side of the rear their game is over I don't really care who they are Granted, of course, you know, minus a tog. I mean, you can really do some damage. I mean, I've hit somebody for 900 points of damage before. I can't remember what tier it was. They showed me that sire to that rear, and I connected with them. And that was pretty much the end of it. As far as skills, all we have is six cents and repair. Six cents is good if I'm in the, the high tier lobbies. That way I can kind of, you know, note if I've been detected. This is KV-85. 175 millimeters of average penetration with 390 damage on average. So just keep that in mind. Extremely nasty gun. And they've kind of limited the gun by the aiming time and the accuracy. <laughs> Which is a bit sad, but it happens. I bought back the IS-3 because it's very, very popular in Clan Wars. I don't necessarily think it's my cup of tea per se. I don't really do heavy tanks much anymore, but I went ahead and covered all my bases and went ahead and bought it back. It's either that or the Russian T-44, which I really didn't like the T-44. I went ahead and also bought back the T-10. A lot of people like the T-10. They played it in the past WCL. I, I'm not really crazy about it. I'm not really crazy about heavy tanks in general. But you know what? That's just me. I went ahead and covered myself and bought it back. Just in case that, you know, we had to run the T-10. 
Now, the IS-7, a lot of people enjoy the IS-7 because the turret is very, very, very tough. But you know what, if you've seen my IS-7 weak spot video, you know you can penetrate this tank rather easily. So, I, I don't know. If you can see the lower plate, then you're in business, but if the things hold down, you may just want to find another target because it's extremely nasty. Granted, the lack of gun depression kind of limits a tank on what it can do. So just be aware of that. Oh, now we come to the Type 59. You have your standard uh, T-54-55 hull with, you know, a few slight Chinese improvements. Just enough to claim it is their tank. You know what? I'm not here to argue. But I, I, I feel some type of way about it. And, you know, your accuracy and your aim time isn't necessarily fantastic. But, you know, your armor makes up for it. This is more or less considered a very good tank because it is adequate in a lot of aspects. So, you know, we have a lot of crew skills as well. You know, we run medium uh, gun rammer, stabilizer, as well as vents. So we're trying to improve everything that's possible. Uh, Japanese Chiri, hey, you know, this is the tank that has a three round burst. So the clip potential necessarily isn't there. You can't really pull up and shut somebody down unless they're almost dead. But you can kind of chip away at them. Moving on here, we have the STB. Very good tank. Minus 10 degrees depression. A lot of pre depression for this tank. The hull armor isn't necessarily lacking. So you can kind of pull up, bottom the gun out, fire at someone, and kind of hope the hull, excuse me, the turret armor holds. And you know, that's fine because it is extremely angled. Not a whole lot of skills on this tank, Six Cents. You're going to see Six Cents be the first skill on a great number of tanks because I highly recommend this uh, skill for any tank in the game aside from the up close personal tanks. You know, your IS 6s, the things with poor accuracy. Here we have the Skoda T25. This is another three round burst tank. This thing doesn't do a great amount of damage, but it gets up there and gets it done. Guys, that's all I have for you today. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time. Also, my constant viewers, please check below in the description. I have a lot of other channels you may be interested in. And, you know, who knows? You may learn something. See you next time.